Is football really operating properly if there isn't a Brazilian wonder kid to track? The next player that people immediately suspect could go right to the top of the football food chain, or at the very least provide plenty of goals and highlight real moments to get every YouTube compilation channel foaming at the mouth. I mean, they already are. When it comes to Endrick, goals and skills, welcome to insert club here. Endrick already has top, top European clubs clambering to get in line for a signature, and he's only just turned 16 one month ago. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Home and Garden TV. I'm your host Paco and today, alongside my good friend Filippo from Tactical Manager TV, we're going to tell you everything you need to know about Palmeiras youth product and expected future star, Endrick. A bit about his life and motivations, where he plays best, his style of play, his maturity and his expectations at 16 versus some of the stars like Neymar and Vinicius that came out of Brazil before him. And why bring Filippo? So, I'm a Palmeiras fan. Perfect. Good enough for me. Well, how about we start then, fellas? If you're new here and you find yourself enjoying the video, then be sure to subscribe. We'll go over his attributes, style of play, and accomplishments thus far, and then get to one of the most important attributes for any young player. What's going on between the ears? What's motivating them and their attitude? Like I said in the intro, it feels weird when there isn't an up-and-coming Brazilian attacker who is overachieving as a teenager, and Endrick is no exception there. Typically, in these player profiles of top talents in football, a common sentiment for most is how they play a level or two above their age group. And again, Endrick is no exception there, as he looks to be the next big attacker straight out of the Palmeiras Academy. So right now, the academy is looking very good, right? You see a player like Gabriel Jesus recently coming out. Um, and you can talk about Gabriel Verón that just went to Porto. Danilo that just came out of the academy as well. He got called up to the national team and he's 20 or 21. He's a, a six, plays as a CDM. So the academy is far better than it was. And I think we finally saw the result in the Copinha. Copinha is a tournament that they play in Brazil every January. It's a U20 tournament where there's over 100 clubs, 100 academies in Brazil, and major towns have played in it. Palmeiras, despite being a massive club in Brazil, had never won the Copinha until 2022, with Endrick being one of the superstars of the team. And again, he was 15, and this is a U20 tournament, and one of the best in the world. And this won't shock you at all, but Endrick was voted as the player of the tournament. Again, a 15-year-old in a U20 tournament, and he managed to score six goals from seven matches in total. I mean, he started the tournament by scoring four in two appearances, and in each of those appearances, he only played for one half. That's not a bad return, as it works out to about four goals in 90 minutes. It's safe to say that Endrick far outshone what Nabar was able to accomplish at that age in that very same tournament. Much of that is down to his physicality, but we'll get to those attributes later. But was he some breakout star from the tournament, or had there been signs and rumblings about Endrick prior to Copinha? So I've been hearing from him from the youth teams for a while. The hype definitely increased a lot in the second semester of 2021, leading to the Copinha early 2022. But yeah, if you're a Palmeiras fan that you follow the team closely, you heard of Endrick at one point from our youth teams. But the real hype nationally in Brazil, definitely towards the end of 2021, leading to the 2022 Copinha in January. And what happened towards the end of 2021 that was building all that hype around him? Mainly because he got promoted to the Palmeiras U20 squads and he was still 15. Being able to play with players four to five years older than him and the highlights, it all translate into the game. So then the hype started to build when you have a 15 year old that can play at that level and you know how competitive it is in Brazil in terms of development and Palmeiras being the current two-time Libertadores champion, a team that's been very hyped in Brazil along with Flamengo lately, people started to talk about him, right? And then there's more that we're going to talk about too of player comparison and, and how Brazil somewhat has been begging for maybe a player at this level since Neymar. And I know we'll talk about Vinicius, but at this age, uh, Vinicius might have not been as hyped in terms of highlights and goal scoring ability. I'm sure you saw some highlights of that tournament. Endrick bullying defenders, scoring all sorts of goals, including bicycle kicks. The boy is clearly a very special player. You don't play with the U20s at 15 years old or the U17s at just 14 for nothing. He actually set a new record in 2021 after he became the first player in Brazilian football history to play in the state finals of the U15, U17 and U20s all in one year. And after winning the Copinha in early 2022, he had already won 11 trophies with Palmeiras across all of the youth levels he has played in. But what kind of player is he exactly? 
you've heard anything about Endrick, I'm sure that it's been somewhere along the lines of, oh, he's the next Ronaldo, or Adriano, or Romario, or something like that. And Filippo will provide his take on that, not in a he's the next context, just so that you can get an idea of his playing style. But first, let's talk about where he plays on the pitch and what kind of player he is. In youth academies, like most players like this, you play as a winger, a 10, a center forward. But Endrik, from what we're seeing, he's a center forward. That's what he is. He's a nine, very technical nine and strong, right? I know many people go on and even talking to you once talked about how he looks very small for a center forward. But yeah, you're seeing videos of him playing with the U20 players and the kid is, he just turned 16. So he's going to grow and he's strong. He can body 20 year olds, 19 year olds. And we've been seeing this. He's a powerful center forward with a killer left foot. His lefty is deadly, clinical in front of the goal. Sure, he can gain some size in terms of height, not strength. He's pretty damn strong for his for his age, stronger than most players at the U20 level. But but yeah, he's a he's a center forward. I I'll, I'll make no excuses for that stupid question I had about his height. But I think that just seeing how dominant he is being, like you said, bodying twenty year olds, you forget that this was a 15, 16 year old kid, right? So it's it's truly impressive. Now, he's a center forward, but what kind of player is he? Can he create chances for himself? Is he just a guy that gets on the end of them? Is he good in the air, despite in spite of his height at the moment? Or is it mostly just, you know, finishing off the ground? So when the ball goes towards him in the air and he's able to win it in the air, he's not the tallest player, right? He's 5'8 or 5'9, that's 1.7 meters. His headers have been accurate. I even saw him score. If you look at his videos, he has scored with his head, but that's definitely not his main attribute, right? And he's also not really a poacher. He can come back, help play make. He's very technical. He can beat the man off the dribble. He can body the man off the dribble. The hold up play is fantastic. And he's the, the one thing that catches my attention with him the most is how calm and clinical he is in front of the goal and his ability to finish with both feet. Don't get me wrong, his left foot is amazing, but if you go back and you look at some of his highlights, you see a very powerful and accurate righty as well. And at this age, to be good with both feet, the last time we saw this with Brazil was Neymar. He was good with both feet at age 16, and, and you see Neymar professionally now, he is good with both, and Hendrik shows that as well. He is very different from Neymar, though, I'll tell you that. Not quite the typical brazilian flair player he does have flair he's able to dribble but he's very 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 direct he goes for the goal he's a goal scoring machine filippo says goal scoring machine while the coordinator of palmeira's academy has referred to him another way saying quote he's like a force of nature he always brings us something as water goes downhill or fire goes uphill there's no way to hold him back and when it comes to player comparisons Endrick himself takes inspiration from not one, but two Ronaldos, both Cristiano and Ronaldo Fenomeno. Endrick explained, quote, Scoring a goal is a sensational thing. It is unique in football. Cristiano Ronaldo is my idol, and he is decisive in front of goal. I have to follow his lead. Before the games, I envision Ronaldo Nazario and Cristiano. I try to follow their lead. When the game is very difficult, like a tough 1-1, I ask the guys to pass the ball to me because I have the spirit of wanting to score goals. I will always want more. Those who have observed him abide by the Ronaldo phenomenal comparisons, some adding that his diminutive size likens him to Romario. Again, remember he just turned 16 and will grow, and I'm mostly saying that for myself here. Some have also mentioned Adriano based on him being a powerful left-footed forward, but Filippo... The Adriano comparisons, I don't like them very much. They're very different. The reason people say Adriano is one, because of how strong he is and Adriano was the tank and because he's a lefty. That's why they say Adriano. But if you had to compare him to a player, it's probably more comparable to the style that Ronaldo phenomenon was, right? If you go back to Ronaldo in the 90s, before the injuries, he was a player that was very hard to knock down, was able to dribble through the defense, getting hit, getting hit. He knew how to find space in the box. And if you give him the opportunity, he was clinical in front of the goal. Obviously, Ronaldo was a righty and Ronaldo phenomenon also with his left, he wasn't very good. So I think Andrew has that small advantage. And no, I'm not saying he's going to be better than the greatest center forward of all time and the greatest Ronaldo of all time. Oh, uh, oh boy, you're going to get something <laughs> like that. But one thing that catches my attention, too, was when you go back to Ronaldo phenomenon, he wasn't really perfect with his head, right? His headers weren't bad, but it wasn't really his strength. When given opportunity, he would score with his head, but it wasn't like he was a goal scoring machine with his head. And Endrik, as of now, it's similar. But again, it's a 16 year old. He's still in the Palmeiras U20s. 
Um, he will probably won't get minutes for Palmeiras this season. But again, Vinicius Jr. was also signed by Real Madrid for what, 50 million without getting professional minutes. And so naturally, it's safe to say that expectations for Endrick are pretty high. And when we go over his attitude in the next section, it will all come full circle for you. But speaking of expectations, with all that he has accomplished before even being legally allowed to drive in Brazil, how has he been viewed when compared to other talents that have come out of Brazil over the last decade or so? The, the, the expectation is he's the best player we've had or best talent we've had or promising player we've had since Neymar. Probably at his age, he's more dominant than Neymar at his age. Different styles. Probably a little bit of the dominance was because Neymar was also very scrawny when he started. Still is a very skinny player, right? But imagine Neymar at age 16. Hendrik also is more focused than Neymar. I think that has to be said. Uh, more like Vinicius Jr., right? In that sense, the mentality. He's very. Uh, they they all come from humble backgrounds in Brazil. They all have a story. Uh, but Hendrik seems very focused. Doesn't seem like the type that parties. Very unlike Brazilian players, to be quite honest, and much different from Neymar. Because I mean, you look at a player of Neymar's talent, probably to be at Messi's and Ronaldo's level. If it wasn't for other problems that he has, Hendrik is probably where they're projecting him to be the next big thing out of Brazil. More dominant than Neymar at his age, for sure. Definitely more hype than Vinicius Jr. at his age. Like you said, Vinicius kind of came out of nowhere. Well, Hendrik, everyone's talking about. And Hendrik's release clause with Palmeiras of the contract he signed is 60 million euros for a 16 year old. So 60 million is a fee you pay for a mature player, not for a 16 year old with no professional minutes. But again, Brazil is a proven market. So when you take these gambles, they eventually pay off or some pay off, most of them. And Real Madrid, for example, took the gamble with Vinicius and even Rodrigo to a certain extent, even though Rodrigo had um, professional minutes before going. But they took this gamble with Vinicius. And last season, we finally saw it pay off. And in terms of potential, it's Hendrik looks far better, more technical, much better player than Vinicius at this age. Oh, and speaking of Vinicius Jr., Hendrik has the same agent as Vinicius, confirmed by a source. Said agent has a great relationship with Real Madrid, so you can see why the links to that club in particular are strong. But it's safe to say that you won't find a single club in Europe at the moment that wouldn't be interested in signing a player whose ceiling seems to be so high. And especially a player who seems so determined. He seems to have that maturity and that elite mentality that you see in the likes of Erling Haaland, an insatiable hunger to get to the top. A bad segue in some respects, apologies, but hunger, or rather the intricacies that lead to living in impoverished conditions, are one of the main driving factors behind Endrick's determination. This is something that you guys will have learned about when speaking about Darwin on the channel here, where he would go to bed hungry or his mother wouldn't eat so that Darwin could eat before his football training. Or there's Luis Diaz as well, coming from an impoverished area of Colombia. It's unfortunately a common sentiment with many footballers poor living conditions, where football thankfully provides a ladder out of that situation. Endrick can absolutely relate to that, as a sad story has now become famous in Brazil surrounding himself and his father Douglas Souza. After Endrick had impressed in a charity tournament and finally been offered a contract with Palmeiras, Sampaio, the academy director of Palmeiras, approved of an offer that included the rental of an apartment for Endrick and his father. This was huge for the family from Brasilia, as previously they had no guarantees of any kind of basic living conditions, including having food on the table. Endrick's father recalls the shame and sadness he felt back in Brasilia one night when his son came to him saying he was hungry and asked for some food. Douglas didn't have any food to give to him, causing him to break down in tears in front of his son. Even more so when his child showed maturity in promising his dad he'd become a footballer and change their lives. And he did so in joining Palmeiras, where his dad was also offered a job as a cleaner and was allowed to eat with the team at the cafeteria. One of the players there, Gelsung, a goalkeeper, noticed that Endrick's father only ate soup. The reason? He only had seven teeth. Jelsung paid for his dental work. What a great guy. But back to Endrick and his character. As Endrick said himself, quote, I'll always fight. I'll be persistent and try until the last minute I'm in the game. I never give up. I pressure defenders. I run more than anyone else on the pitch. And Filippo attests to the driving force behind him as well. Something Americans, even Europeans for the most part, don't understand is this kid is playing to get out of poverty, right? Um, he will break your leg if he has to. It's just, you see him pushing kids out of his way as if he's in a war and not in a soccer game. I think 
us thankfully as humans we don't go through hunger mm -hmm. right but that kid has gone through that right seen his dad cry in front of him for all of that so i think that is something important to point out too how and and he looks very focused i i mentioned that because it's quite clear you see the interviews neymar was cocky from like first interview he's ever done you could see this kid is way full of himself right um having troubles with the coach Hendrik looks like the complete opposite. And I kind of like the fact that he's close to Abel Ferreira because I do hate the way Abel Ferreira plays. But Abel Ferreira is very strict, very serious, right? It's not going to let him get away with shit. It puts things into perspective, doesn't it? it? There are those who are motivated simply by the game to be the best. And Hendrik falls into that category for sure. And he seems as though he's well on his way. But there's that second aspect, his human experience, going to bed hungry, having to fight for everything just to survive in Brasilia. That could just be the added boost for Endrick to become a top, top player in world football, because he's certainly well on his way. I thank you for joining me for this video and another thank you to Filippo from Tactical Manager TV. He's doing great work over there and hearing him speak about Palmeiras, which he doesn't get to do too often, is always a pleasure. If you're new here, then please subscribe, drop a like if you enjoyed the video or a dislike if you didn't, and beyond that, have a great day. Ciao guys.